Okay, they say it's close enough. So it is 10 o'clock, and um, today we're going to talk about superstars. And this is like one of my very, very, very favorite topics to talk about because um, I tend to be, I kill plants, I will admit it. And so uh, superstars I have a better luck with, natives and superstars. So, um, Texas Superstar is a registered name, and so it can't be used by just anybody for anything. So it's, it, it, you'll see it, and it always has the R at the end of it. And these are called star, uh, strong and stunning plants for Texans. And there are, is actually a process of getting plants named as superstars. And there is a, uh, a board of people across the state that are selected and they look at the plants and they make the decision whether or not the plants are going to be superstars. They also get some input from horticulturists and from people with, with the botanic gardens and uh, extension people and actually landscapers also because they want to know how do the plants, these particular plants work in your area. Uh, they did at first have all of the board from Station and uh, Overton and San Antonio and then finally few, they realized there's a whole other half of the state over here and we grow plants too, and so they've added Lubbock and then Uvalde. We do get um, a good group of people will give them information. And then they, they look at the plants. That's how they determine if it's a superstar. They have trial or demonstration gardens across the state, and then if they work, Stars. If they don't work, there may be some more tweets that can be named. Uh, the, right now, the sites are in College Station, San Antonio, Overton, and Lubbock. Lubbock hasn't been on there that many years. The others on East Texas were, have been there for quite a while. But they are getting feedback uh, from all over the state now. There's minimal soil preparation, and so these plants have to be able to survive in that type of environment. Uh, the ornamentals are a little bit different because they're there for showy, and so they re do rely a lot on horticulturists and extension folks for, for their about how they work in, in their particular areas. Another factor that they have to consider when doing be grown in quantities that will, uh, you know, can be sold all over the state. If you can't grow a lot of these things, then really not going to be good superstars. Uh, right now, the, there's a Texas triangle. It's Dallas, San Antonio, and Houston, and that is the target uh, off it, or the target area for superstars. That's where most of the growers are. But not only that, that's where most of the people live in those, sec in those three cities. So that's why the um, target area is the triangle. So they're important. Well, they're important because they're tough, they're beautiful, they are, um, they're going to be successful in a variety of climates. And that's what is extremely important. Now, not all superstars are to able to be for the state. You have to look at some other things. Um, and then average homeowner can be successful with them. And I tell you, I'm a master gardener. I guess that was in 2013. And one of, I was so intimidated when I walked in because all these people know everything about plants and uh, they said, you know, if you haven't killed a plant seven times, then you're not a gardener. And so I felt a whole lot better because I had a few I killed seven 
sometimes, that variety. So we are all, even the superstars, the native plants are struggling right now in the health and, and the But we have a better chance with these. Uh, there's some considerations. We need to know what the hardiness zone is because if we are looking at a plant that grows in the hardiness zone on the coast, it may not grow well here. So we have to look at the zones. We used to be B, and then they redid the hardiness zones. They moved us to 8A, and a lot of the and B. So when I'm looking at plants, I look at sevens and eights because those would be our Now, you can grow anything you want to. It doesn't matter if you want to put in the time and the money to be able to do it. And that's one of the key things is um, how you want to spend. Do you want to toil in your yard or do you want to tend to it when it needs it? So uh, we had, a, I have a friend who really, 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 it's not a superstar, but it kind of falls into this category, wanted um, a lemon tree. So she saved a lemon, a seed out of a lemon, a pink lemon, and she planted it, and it grew. She had this little tree, and then it got a little bit bigger, and she put it in a pot. Well, you know, citrus trees don't do, don't do well here in Abilene, in the area. So she would take her pot, bring it back in the house. Same thing with cold. It spent all winter in her dining room. So I wanted the lemon tree put out the uh, Not all of us want to do that. I you know, put something in the ground and then go visit it, you know, when I'm watering and talk to it a little bit and then it grows. But you can grow almost anything. There was a, a person who moved to Abilene from uh, East Texas and loved, loved, loved azaleas. And again, those are not superstars and they're not going to grow in our area either because they need the acidic soil of East Texas. So he had his flower beds, the, the soil removed, brought in more soil at, from East Texas and all the azaleas loved them. They were gorgeous. I would drive by his house just to look at them. And they decided they were going to move on. And the person who bought the house, you know what happened. They pulled up the azaleas and planted things that would grow in Abilene without all of the work and the expense of getting the soil at the right acidic level. So you can grow anything. Uh, some of the things you always have oil amendments, the sun or shade requirements, the water requirements. So be sure and look at that when you're, you're checking on your plant. This is pretty small, but you may be able to see it in your handout. Oh, it's pretty small too. But you can see um, that, uh, 8A, it's kind of tannish one from El Paso, which is also a, a totally different climate, and then all across West Texas. And when we get to Taylor County, the very edge of it is 7B. The rest of it's 8A. That's why I say we're, we're kind of on the cusp of things. Then it goes all the way up through the Metroplex and into Texarkana. So when you see a plant that says 8A, read the rest of the requirements on it because it may be 8A for the Metroplex or, and not for us. But the, the difference is the temperature, the hardiness zone, and uh, it, I, I, most, that's why most people think we are still in um, 7B because 7B gets a low temperature five to ten and you know we usually see a, a something under ten every winter if it's an 8a the lowest it gets is 10 it's 10 to 15 degrees so you can see the the slight difference there my favorite website of all if 
most things, is the Aggie horticulture, and especially for superstars, it is a great uh, resource for you. On the, the superstar section of the website, Aggie Horticulture, it's going to give you an entire plant list of everything that is because it was named a number of years ago. It's still going to be there, but they add new plants as superstars every year. They've added two this year already. So it gives it updated. It gives a plant profile for each one of the plants. If you're looking for annuals, it's got a section of annuals, and you can just click on the, that uh, name, and it will give you a plant profile give you like a hardiness zone and sunshade, a lot of information. At the bottom, it will give even other resources. I'll show you one in a minute. And then it has a color brochure. This is the old one that was done in 2020, but the one that's on the website is the up-to-date one. It's going to list all of them, give you a picture, and then the information. I rely on the website for so much information. This is an example of a plant profile. Uh, it gives the botanic name. It gives the, uh, the just the common name. That I'm more of a common name person when I'm looking at plants, but there are, are folks that actually will say, walk in and say, what do you know about and give us a botanic name? And so this of them. Uh, on the Angelonia, the only one that is a superstar is the Serena series. And then it tells you about the plant and, you know, sun, uh, sun shade. Oh, that's the next page. This gives colors. How to and then it has most annuals don't have a hardiness zone because they're just, they live for one season. And full season, the height, Bloom time. And then it gets, depending on who wrote the profile that goes online, it may be or uh, a few have the notes. And then for further information, it gives you some more, uh, a, another link you can follow. So this is available on every superstar plant. Now the annual are plants that you, you have seeds, they grow. They produce seeds and they die all in one season. That many of us use for the color or for fillers during the year. We have uh, perennials or shrubs that anchor our beds, but then we use annuals to, to give some color or in pots. Um, so these are the, the annuals. Superstars. I'm just going to mention them and then we'll go back and, and add a little information. Again, this is all on the, the website too. The Angelina Serena, and we just looked at the profile on that. Um, and I have one right here. I have to apologize. My plants looked a whole lot better until the wind blew them over on the porch last night. And, of course, they had lived through the 108-degree uh, temperature yesterday. So the, this, they have been. But great little plant. Uh, I, I usually keep them in pots. The whopper begonias. Now, there are a lot of small begonia plants, but the whoppers are the bigger ones. They have the big leaves, and they're really very attractive. Euphorbias, uh, Texas blue bonnets. We're all familiar with the blue bonnets. And they've named two others, other types of blue bonnets as superstars. The maroon ones, and we know why A&M, uh, the maroon blue bonnet is a superstar. And then the Lady Bird. Johnson Royal Blue, really bright, vibrant blue. Uh, there was a uh, somebody blue and and they had made a Texas flag out of it, and a lot of really creative. 
weeks if you have the time. And they talked about how when he planted it, he was so careful about where he put the seeds to make sure it would, they would be in the right one. And so some seeds that were a different color got mixed in, and he was out there carefully pick them up to, so it wouldn't ruin the... Uh, the uh, blue days, a lot of people like to have a, a pop of blue in the, their garden. Blue days is a real blue. Uh, most lavender, uh, but this is a, a true blue color. And that we planted blue days in some of the pots out at the expo center, the big plant, wooden planters. And so they got really full sun. And then the heat, not only there, but the, the ambient heat from the, the asphalt and the wind. And they did uh, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the uh, Euphorbia is Gomfrina and uh, Mexican Heather, and it's the Allison variety. Larkspurs, uh, that's such an old plant, and I know growing up, my that would pop up somewhere in the yard. We didn't know over until the Larkspurs were through. But it, the, it, a lot of our, these uh, superstars and native plants bring back memories of things that happened in your childhood. Petunias. Petunia is a gorgeous color, uh, kind of a magenta -y color. And it's very hardy, very easy to propagate also. However, since it is a, a trademark plant, you have to buy it from a, a the tidal wave petunias are also very hardy. And pentas, can't say enough about pentas. They, they really, they plant the blue days. And the vinca, and now they look very similar. This is a, a cora vinca. This is a regular vinca. And it, it's not blooming, but they look they look identical. This one is so hardy, though. Uh, it's it's a much hardier plant than. That. But uh, last year, if any of you went to the butterfly exhibit at the fair, we were asked to do the plants, the pollinators, to keep the butterflies going while they were there for ten days. And so most of us just took all of our pots off our porches or backyards, whatever. And so we supplied that room with plants. And I have seven pots of vinca on my porch, faces west. And so it gets the, the north wind, it gets the south wind, not much north wind this time of year. But uh, the south wind just beats them to death. And they just flourished that tall and then I had them spilling and they were always just blooming. They were happy. And all zinnias. The purslane is another good one for the Texas annual. Now perennials, uh, these are we expect to last at least two years or more than two years. Some of the perennials that planted when we moved to the house where we live now. Uh, every so, and back then I didn't know they were superstars. I just liked the plant. So now I'm thinking, yes, I, I can actually say I know what will work for a long time. It also doesn't have a lot of, uh, it doesn't have the woody stem. That's what differenti differentiates a perennial from a Tree. a flare hibiscus, more in the hibiscus. Uh, uh, hibiscus plants will grow well here. Others not. So, you know, make sure that it's one that will grow in our area. The trailer Montana. 
Originally, they called it purple trailing lantern, but they've also as a superstar too, so that variety will work. And the Turk's cap, and it is red, the pink, the white. The red is the one you see most often, and it is very uh, The Lindheimer muley grass, we planted the Princess Caroline grass in our tribe. See how it's a perennial, but I think it was it was a it was out of our zone, and so we would live in back. Well, plant those grasses in your yard. Uh, it, the, the Princess Caroline in, in like a raised bed, and, and it's about that tall. And when we it, come back the next year, because it's one of those things that we we wanted to see if it would come back, and it didn't. But uh, it, again, it was out of our zone. But we wanted to see what it just gorgeous grass. Uh, it, two of us were in the raised beds with shovels trying to dig it out and the roots had gone from the bed all the way to the ground. So yes, grasses can grow in the ground. In a pot, you can grow grasses in your pot. Do you have some in your in the ground? No. I, I was asking this in the lawn. Lawn grass. No, it's not a lawn grass. It, it is definitely an ornamental grass. Uh, the dwarf Mexican petunia and then the, the two phloxes in Plumbago, they are very hardy in our area, and they also add a pop of color in your beds. Mexican bush sage, Henry Durg salvia, my favorite. It expires salvia. I think I've met a salvia I don't like. And, and I just, the colors, the varieties, I. The Tangerine Beauty cross vine is a really good one if you have a, a, an area where you have a trellis or an arbor. It looks really pretty on those. You can do it. A Blue Princess Verbena. Uh, it comes back and it is beautiful color. It, it is more of a purple instead of a real true blue. Uh, butterfly. That one was just added last year. You know red yuccas very, very well here. I think one of the favorite places I like to drive is down Antley. And you know, all, all behind the houses on the fence on Fairway, they have the red yuccas. And those have been there. They survived the snow and they have done very, very well. Now, there are some things that are called and these are, are perennials in tropical areas, but they would be annuals in our area. So you have to realize if you plant one of these, it may not survive more than one. Um, the Brazilian red, and a little the pride of Barbada, Barbada. It's like the bird of paradise. They've done well. We one at Swenson House ago, and back every year it will go down to the bottom, and we cut it off, and then the next year it just it just finishes again. Uh, the Brazilian sky flower, gold star, that it it may or may do well here. The folks that I know who plant them, they have done exceptionally well here in Abilene, and they have the most gorgeous yellow f blooms. Uh, we planted one at the Extension office. We have we planted one at Swenson House. Um, here. Bush and the cracker bush. This is the. Uh, this is one of. Them. This is the fire. It has little flowers on it. You can also tell flowers will put their 
Superstar plants in pots that say Texas Superstar, and that way you can immediately be drawn to them. Other growers don't. They use their own brand. But I think that this one is pretty stunning. Uh, we've got one at Swenson House that does really, really well, and it's come back every year also. And then the tapioca and the alice. Now the woody shrubs, they've got the woody stem, but they aren't as tall as trees. So these are going to be the things. That's what differentiates them. And a lot of the shrubs will have multiple stems. And uh, some are deciduous, some are evergreen. So again, look at your your plant profile or the tag on your plants before you, you plant something and then realize it's not quite the plant you wanted. The Blue Angel Althea is uh, very, very attractive. I'm going to show some pictures of some of the ones from our area. They also have a white one, and we have trialed the white one out at the extension office, and it has come back. The Lens Legacy Cenizo, that's a Texas sage. And earlier in the year, if when you pass some of these places that had what this uh, is, it may not have been a Lens Legacy, but that's a Texas sage. Particularly like their feet to be wet. I had one that was about this tall at the end of the house uh, at the porch, and it we'd had it for 15 years and just loved it. And then we had a leak in our flower bed, and it never recovered from from all of the water, as well as the digging around. It. Didn't want to be moved, but they are very hard. Several roses that are considered super. Dream. We've got one at the extension office and the grandma's yellow rose, knockout roses, and the, uh, Marie Daly rose. These are, uh, you know, they're great plants. After Rose Rosette got started around the state, plant roses that, you know, watch them carefully. Uh, I had not heard much about Rose Rosette until someone the other day, a couple of weeks ago, contacted us and they were losing all the roses down one side of their house and said that they had been told by the landscaper it was Rose Rosette. So I don't know if it's going to pick up, if it's something with the heat or the drought or whatever. Again, these old roses are some of the newer varieties. Oh, oh, I say that's my favorite plant so many times, but I love roses. This one was blooming uh, yesterday, but, but they have the prettiest pink bloom, and these are so hardy. Uh, they also can give you gifts, uh, so if you plant them, you may have a few upshoots around it, and you can either dig them up or you can... Uh, give them to friends. Right, John? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has a, the most border of uh, the rock rose. It's so pretty. The other that I really, really love is the Texas Lilac Vitex. And we see those in uh, a, a lot around town because they are hardy. I, I guess about three years ago, we had a new variety that we were selling at the plant sale, and it was the Shoals Creek. Um, and I thought, I said, oh, I'll try it. And they, they have not gotten that big. They are, they are more, they are shrubs. And of course, I trim them and make them look more like a tree, but they're not getting the height that the regular, Vitex trees will. I do like them just because they're, they're so hardy and I love the, the purpley spiky blooms. And let's see, I don't have one. I didn't bring one. But I also give you friends too if you if you the trees 
These are the woody, they're well, they have a single trunk or stem. Durable height. They have lateral branches, and so that's what differentiates them from the shrubs. There aren't as many superstar trees, and the reason is they have to watch them for some And if it takes 20 years for them to get tree size, then they start looking at them as superstars. It, it takes a long time to uh, get them listed. The Basham's Pink Party Pink Crepe Myrtle. Crepe Myrtles do really well out here. They, they, do, they do well. And the Deciduous Holly, uh, I had planted some 20 years ago, over 20 years ago, and they'd done really well. And this spring, I had four die. Know what happened? Lived out their life, but I have to replace them with something. Shant is uh, one of the now the specialty plants. That's just kind of a, a catch-all category. The balsamic blooms basil, and I'll show a picture of that in, in a few minutes. It's gorgeous. It grew very, very well in our uh, raised bed. Victoria red grape, Natchez blackberry, green magic broccoli, it grew really well in our raised bed too. Uh, this caricature plant and orchids. Orchids are not, they don't do that well in our area. Some people can grow them. The Satsuma, those are going to be along the coast. You know, those are like the mandarin orange type plants. Uh, basket of fire pepper, and then the ornamental peppers, the New Mex, uh, Twilight, Purple Flash. And those are, they're beautiful. Uh, I don't want to eat them. Y'all took some home from the one that, that we were growing? You didn't? Yeah, they were, they were supposed to be really hot, so they were not very popular. And then the barbecue skewers last year, I believe, uh, were and we a different variety of rosemary. Vegetable strawberry, everybody. The dwarf cherry surprise. Tycoon tomato was named a superstar a year or two ago. And it is an amazing tomato and water lilies. So let's look at a few. You know, the blue bonnets, we all know what they look like, but this is you an idea. See, I, I have seen any of the maroon. We need to see and try them out, see how they look. The tidal wave petunias, and they're they're very, very hardy, look great, under uh, in pots. Lark, a variety of colors, just, just beautiful. And then the Angelica Serena series, and that's what this is, minus the blooms. It comes in a variety of colors. We have grown the purple and the strawberry, and they just multiply, and they spread lots of seeds too. But if you have a place that you want to fill, this is a great, great plant to do it. And then the blue days, I had mentioned the, the blue days here. Uh, it doesn't have blooms on mine, but it's a blue color. And the Vinca Cora, you can get that in all the colors you get the regular Vinca in. The pink, the raspberry, the red, white, purple. And Pintas, um, they come in a variety of colors. We've, put, we've uh, planted those in the wooden planters out at the Expo Center where they got the wind and sun and heat and whatever water.
and they did exceptionally well. And the fall zinnias, the, the two varieties that are superstar are profusion and zahara. And the profusion, you can see, has uh, lots of, of little rounded leaves, and some of the zahara are more of a point and uh, they are as full as the others. But they have a bigger center. I know when I go to uh, a place and I'm looking for plants, and it, most of the time the tag on the pot will say Xenia, right? And, and I always ask, is this a profusion or is this a Sahara? And they look at me like I'm speaking a different language or something. So, uh, but I do always try to ask, and, and some of them will know if it is. And then on the perennials, and you can see, even though it's called blue, it is more of a, a lavender color. And it gets very full. Um, it, it's, it's a beautiful plant. And the Texas Gold Columbine, you know, this is a, a good one for if you have shady areas. Flare hibiscus, we have six hibiscus plants out at the office. Weeks ago, we had the most gorgeous them, just full of blooms. And Henry, and I, I can't think about doing Henry Duelberg if I don't say I have to have Augusta. Uh, when I was a, a, an intern in, in 2013, um, I was learning the difference in the, the types of sex. And the lady that was teaching me, she, she was telling me the story about them. Um, Greg Grant is a horticulturist in the and he is always going out to old houses and old cemeteries and walking through them and taking little bits and pieces of plants uh, if, he's, if it's something he's never seen before. And he saw this particular uh, salvia, the, the blue purpley one, and he took that back and, uh, and he took part of the white one too. And they looked and they all their tests on it to determine which variety it was. And it all came back saying it had never been, it's, it's one that was brand new, I mean, not brand new plant, but had never been categorized. And they told him he could name them. And so he, back, he said, okay, the, the one on the side where Henry is buried is a Henry Duelberg salvia, and the, the white one on the side is a when we buy, we all have and Augusta so that they, they stick together, happy together. It's in the pink or the blue or the white. And it, it's really great along borders. It can also uh, give you friends. It, 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 but... Uh, Sometimes we need those because if you have one that dies, you've got something that you can move over to fill the space. The John Fannick Phlox, it's really pretty. And the Mexican Bush Sage, another great superstar. Uh, Cape Plumbago. And then, of course, the Red Yucca. And, and a, a Every once in a while, you'll see the yellow yucca around town. It's not a superstar. I don't know if they added this one later, but right now it's the red yucca. And the Turk's cap. I always know when my Turk's cap and my salvia have started blooming because they attract, the salvia especially, they will attract the butterflies, but they attract hummingbirds. And I have them. Uh, outside my dining room window and my cat sits in the window and watches outside something and when I start hearing patting and beating on the window I know that 
and we look outside together and look at the hummingbirds and the butterflies. Gulf Muley is so pretty. Uh, when in, in the wind, it just is, is wonderful. And that's a relatively new addition. And then the, the per annuals that will grow here, but they uh, really the annuals. Uh, this is the fire. That does look just like the one that we have uh, at Swenson House. We, we plant a lot of things in beds where, where they let us do work and try them. Say if you want to see one, you can go look here. Uh, so we have them all superstars and natives all around town. And the Pride of Barbados uh, is, is really pretty. Some of them are more of a yellow than the red orange. Esperanza. When I was watering plants this last week at uh, the Expo Center, watching the big go into the floor and then they'd be backing out and go to a different way. It was just covered in bees the other And I know we saw some of the prettiest Vitex trees, you know, Vitex trees. They are, they are so good here in Abilene. I, I, uh, I had like a three. And then these are the angel and the white angel Althea. The white angel is the one that we have at the extension office. Uh, the blue one, we thought we were going to get one of those, but it, it went home with somebody else to try at their house. And then Grandma's yellow rose. And the Belinda's Dream Rose. And the Rock Rose, which is not really a rose. Uh, the Lynn's Legacy, uh, the Texas Sage, like I mentioned. I, I don't see many blooms on them right now. We have one at the Extension Office, and it has some, but it's not covered like it was. And the trees, the Basham's Party Pink Crepe Myrtle. I, I don't have Basham's Pink. I, I bought it 20 years ago. It was more the raspberry looking crepe myrtles and three. And on the other end of the porch, three. And after the Snowmageddon, when they came out in the spring, Three raspberries, two raspberries, and what in the world is this one? Uh, you know, where the it forked, raspberry, purple. So for some reason, you know, it was probably has something to do with a graft, and they had grafted on, it on, um, on the, st the raspberry onto a purple st uh, root because it's a plant. And so mine just morphed into something else. And I've had several people tell me I should just cut that off, but I like it. It's different. It, it's eye-catching. Now, Shantung maple, we are always being asked about maple trees here. And maple trees do not do particularly well here. Uh, but they the color. And so one of the things that you can do is have a Chinese pistache, which does do well here. And it's going to be great. Something that is going to change colors, but this is a tree that does well in our area. So my red oak is too. <laughs> Terribly, at that time it's just beautiful. We have a forty mile an hour wind, and my neighbor has all the leaves. These are the specialty plants, the ornamentals, and then. The, uh, the, this one has more the yellow, orange, red. Uh, the New Mex does. The, this, is, this one has the purple and red. 
and I thought I had a different one. Okay, Green Magic Broccoli, great, great out at the uh, extension office, did well. Celebrity tomatoes, who doesn't like a celebrity tomato here? And this is tomato. Uh, I have a friend who used to be a master gardener, and we wanted to, and she's always growing tons of tomatoes. So she took a, a tycoon tomato. I lost all mine because they were under about this much hail this year. Well, actually, I, I saved one to a tycoon. And they had the best, I think, of any tomato I've eaten this year. So next year, I'm going to plant tycoons, especially if we can find some. Or we may try to grow some from seed and have them at our spring plant sale. And then the barbecue skewers rosemary has done really well in Abilene. This is the balsamic blooms basil. And when we bought the plant, it said so we, Let's try it and see what happens. And then it started getting the purple on it. And it was gorgeous. extension office and, and it was a, a large plant we had two of them just beautiful and so we've we hope to be able to get some more of that this year it did so well and then water lilies um, you know if you have a pond it's nice to have water lilies it's nice to have fish and strawberries um, last year, you know, strawberries in the fall, and we ordered a bunch. Did you get some of the strawberries? Did yours do well? Oh, well, they have to be watered. Uh, but we will probably try to offer some strawberries again this year. They're not very easy to find. We, we had to search for them. And the Victoria Red Grape. Uh, the yellow butterfly vine, it's a really pretty plant and does well in our area. And the additions this year were the firecracker and the ruby crushed tomato. And the ruby crushed tomato just was added a few weeks ago. And it is a great And I have not seen any, didn't see any of those plants this year, but we're going to be looking for them so we can try them and see how well they do. Okay, and this is the firecracker. And, and it's got a bloom that looks very much in the same shape as an Esperanza. And then there's the ruby crush. References, superstar.com and Aggie Horticulture. Um, Talk about. Oh, this is a, the New Gold Lantana. There are a lot of different Lantanas. Some do well here, some don't. And some of the hybrid, the new colors, aren't as successful in the heat and the drought. Uh, but the New Gold, again, I, I have had these in my yard for 20 years. And every year I just get the, the loppers and go like that and cut them back and they just bush out. I'm not the best at pruning things because it hurts me. If I see something with a leaf, I go, oh, you're growing. I, I, I can't cut that off. But I know they do much better if we do keep them pruned back and let them bush out and be, be fuller. Uh, so uh, like the rock rose needs to be um, this I need to pinch back when I plant it put it back in the pot. So just remember that if they start looking scraggly, most of these plants can. I'm not going to do it when it's this hot, uh, just because I, they're stressed already and I don't want to push them over the edge. But you can't go wrong with the, the new gold lantana. Uh, just, it's one. So, 
I have any questions. I just uh, invite you to look at, um, go places. I, I know what we used to say, and I would never, ever, ever recommend this anymore. Used to, we'd drive down the street and we'd see somebody's yard that had something in it that we really liked. And I wouldn't think too much about going up and ringing the doorbell and saying, can you tell me what that is? I really like that. And uh, I, I'm not going to do that. I could take a cutting off of it. But sometimes people will give you cuttings if they have something that you really like. And, uh, you know, willing to share. We will be having a plant sale in October, the fall plant sale. It's on the end is on the 14th and it will go online plant sale at probably eight o'clock on Wednesday four and you can order everything and then we start in that afternoon whatever's left is uh, for sale on Saturday eight to twelve we are looking for trees, some of the specialty trees and the superstar uh, items that we can find. I tell you that growers are also, amazingly, they have sun and heat and drought right now too. So our list that we're getting, check back with us, and so we can't wait until October anyway. A number, and we're also looking at bulbs. To yes, are are on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Because we, we, we carry salvias, uh, spring and fall plant sales. Because you can plant perennials in the fall and that way they get a good root system before next year. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, put it put it on your calendar because uh, we we will have um, a lot a lot of plants. Yeah, but we also have a lot of information on our Facebook page, and then we have videos on our YouTube, uh, our training sessions, and then other things that we've added to it. So you know, check that out too. Okay, yes. Oh, and then with the library, we'll have programs of. First Tuesday at, at 6. Fifth and the 8th of next month, and it's trees. And so be sure and come, because that is going to be a big deal. Fall is the time to plant trees. And then we're hoping to do uh, maybe another seminar on that. Saturday seminar, the last Saturday of this month, is at the Extension Office, and the topic is garden art uh, that fits any budget. So that's some ideas. And uh, let's see, we've gotten the plant sale. And then this will be the last Saturday. We'll pick it back up in February of next year. So, okay, thank y'all for coming. <laughs>